Hello everyone and welcome to the instructions for how to install the Grimba hack for Battle for the Grid. Now, at the moment it's hosted on GitHub, but hopefully in the near future it will also be on Nexus mods and it will also contain the links uh, that you will need in order to install this mod. So let's get started. We have my tweet here, which leads through to the, uh, the actual GitHub repository itself. So we're going to click on this. And when you get to this page, I recommend you read everything on this page because it has the warnings that basically if you're using a mod, it's your own responsibility. It's technically against uh, M-Way's uh, terms of services if you use this in private matches, but I'm, I'm willing to believe that M-Way don't really care if you're both consenting players to the matches. So it does work in directs. It does work in trading mode and offline, but um, it doesn't work in lobbies and online play. And it goes through how to install it, which we're going to go through these steps here. And it also goes through how to use the mod. From this page, we're going to click on the releases, which is here. Or you can also go down to the instructions and click on the releases page here. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take us here. And we want to download this zip file, not the source code, but the Grimba hack. There we go. And we got that downloaded. We're just going to keep that downloaded. We'll come back to it. And then we're going to go back to the main uh, the main page. And we're going to click on this uh, link here. And that's going to download Bepinex, which is our code injector for Unity-based games. And now that we have both of these, we're going to load up Steam. And we want to load up Steam just so that we can easily get to the uh, Battle for the Grid install. So here, browse local files. And when we're here in browse local files, I do recommend that you just take a copy of your install directory just for peace of mind for yourself that you know that uh, if anything does come up and you want to revert, uh, if you want a quick way to switch between using the mod and not using the mod, you've got a backup here that you can just switch to. So we're going to go back into the original one. And we're going to get that first downloaded file. Uh, let's uh, let's open up that folder. There we go. So uh, detach tab. So we've got two windows. We've got our mods from our downloads folder, and we've got the Battle for the Grid install. So the first thing we want to do is open up the BepinX uh, download, and we're going to drag and drop everything into the root directory of Battle for the Grid. Just like that, nice and quick. And we're going to close it. Now we're going to go inside the BepinX folder and then plugins. And we're going to grab the Grimba hack. And there's two files in here. Both of them have to go inside the plugins folder. So this is the mod that I have developed and worked on myself. And the universe lib is a great library for creating UI elements. And um, if you've seen the other video already, uh, all, all of the panels, the buttons, and the windows that I have are all because of this library. It's fantastic. Thank you to the people that develop that. So now we've got both of these in. All we need to do, if you're a Windows user, you're done. You're just going to click play, and it's going to work. Now, I'm going to go through an instruction for Linux and Steam Deck users, which is what I'm using at the moment. I'm actually doing this on a Steam Deck. So we're going to go through that instruction. But for um, Windows users, there's, a, uh, there's going to be timestamps, so just skip to the next part. So for Linux users and Steam Deck users, you will need to run an additional step. And that is because the, the way that you do your, uh, the way that Bepinix works, it needs to use WinHTTP locally to this folder. And we just need to tell Wine that we're doing that. So we go, we're going to load up something called Proton Tricks. If you haven't downloaded it, there is a flat pack version of it. If you're on Steam Deck, this is what I did. I installed, I went to Discover. I opened this up, I typed in Proton Tricks, and uh, I, I installed this. The first time you load it, it will ask you to run a command, which might still be in my... Yeah, it will ask you to run this command here. Uh, Flatpak override user, file system, blah, blah, blah. It's just basically saying, if you want to use Proton Tricks, you have to give Flatpak permission to that directory. Uh, to the, you have to give it access to the file system. So by running that, you give it access to the file system. It will ask you to reboot and run Proton Tricks again. 
So that's all you have to do. Um, if you're doing it on Linux as well and you're using flat packs, same thing here. So we're going to run, uh, we've already run Proton Tricks here, and we're going to pick Battle for the Grid because we want to run, it's, this, is, this is the same as Wine Tricks. So we just want to run Wine Tricks against a Proton game. And then from here, we're going to select the default wine, prime, uh, wine prefix, and then we're going to run Wine Config. And then once Wine Config is uh, up, up and running, we're going to go to Libraries, and we want to go for win HTTP. I recommend typing it because this list is mad long. And we're going to click Add. So it's here. We're going to hit Apply. OK. And I recommend you run Wine Config again and go back in because it doesn't always add it. I've had it before not add it, and I don't know why. I think possible is human error, right? Uh, it's most likely human error. It's definitely more likely me than them. But uh, it didn't It didn't add it for me, and you absolutely have to make sure that you have it added. And with that done, you are now in the same position as the Windows users, and we're just going to go through launching the game. So now we're going to launch the game. And the first time it runs, it will take a little bit longer than usual. But what should happen is, is we should get a console window. There we go. This is Bepinex. And the first time it runs, it's going to, I think it decompiles a load of files. It does actually tell you somewhere here. Initializing binary, creating application model. Um, and the reason why this mod was only possible in recent history, in, you know, recently is because um, Battle for the Grid uses something called CPP, uh, IL2CPP. And I think it's necessary for cross-platform because the switch might need it. And uh, Bepinix only recently supported IL2 CPP games. And that's why this is all, this uh, modding the game has just not been possible until now. So, with that, now that that's finished, the game is now loading. And with any luck, the mod loads first time. I guess we'll find out. There were no errors in that log, so we should be good, right? It's loading the suspense. Hey, look, and it's working. Isn't that perfect? Now I'm just going to force close this game. And that, that's the mod working. So one of the things you can do is if we go back into browse local files, if you don't want that window to pop up, uh, I believe there is a config file here. And you can go inside this Bepinix config file. And it's got a load of notes on what you can do and that and what it should log. And I think um, you can turn off the login console. So here, let me just make it a little bit bigger. You've got login console. And if you do uh, false here and close this, next time we run the game, it shouldn't load up the console. There's, there may be some other settings on that as well. I haven't really played around with them. I use the console because I'm modding the game. So for me, I need to see what's happening with it. But for you, you may not care. Uh, you don't want that window to pop up. And uh, yeah, so you can just turn it off there. So now when we load the game, it should just load the game. And it won't take, it won't take as long as it did the first time because it only has to build the application files once. There we go. And it's just loading the game. And once we get through these videos, we should have the mod still. Mod? Hey, there we go. Yep, we've got the mod. And that's all working. So if you have any questions about how to do this mod, uh, how to do this, um, join the main Discord for Grid. Uh, I'm on there. Hit me up on Twitter. I may be able to support you there as well. If you're familiar with GitHub, I will I will listen to issues on GitHub. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I may launch a Discord server in order to support this soon if there's a lot of people. But if I do that, I'll announce it on Twitter um, and make it known that there's a Discord for this uh, mod. But for now, there hasn't been any need for support because it just works. As you see, it's very easy to install. So install the mod. Have fun. Let me know how you get on with it and uh, share your experiences with using it because I would love to see how you're all using it. With regards to the mods I will be doing in the near future, I'm adding more training mode features. I will be uh, looking to improve uh, training mode a lot and any other quality of life issues that I can see that are quick, uh, quick wins to improve how the game works. I will be doing that. I will not be doing balance changes. I will not be doing balance changes. I will not be do adding anything that will exclude 
non-PC players from the game. I don't want to create changes that will exclude console players. So for that reason, everything I'll be doing will be mostly about quality of life and won't affect online play. That's for, that's for certain. Just so you know what where I'm kind of standing. I also don't know how to deal with assets because I'm a, I'm a web developer who's just kind of stumbled into C Sharp and uh, started playing around. And I have had to learn Unity as well as this code base to like figure out how to mod anything. For now, I'm not looking into assets, but it's something that I've been playing around with as well. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs>